So we're here at the DisplayPort area here at Mobile World Congress, and uh, who are you? I'm Bill Lempesis, Executive Director of Visa, which is the standards body that produces uh, the DisplayPort standard. So DisplayPort is uh, all over here, so, right. so that's uh, used by millions of people for the displays? It is. It's uh, used uh, by people all over the world. It's produced in products from Lenovo, Dell, HP, Microsoft. Uh, Sony, LG, it goes on and on. All the major players in the business today have products that use DisplayPort, whether they're displays or uh, systems like notebooks, tablets, and now uh, cell phones. And for example, right here on the, on the continuum, there's a HDMI yes. and a DisplayPort. Correct. So the uh, phone itself outputs DisplayPort over USB-C, so it carries both the video, uh, uh, carries USB and power. So in this case, this uh, external adapter is actually charging the phone. The phone is not plugged in. It gets its power from the uh, plug-in of the adapter. And once you get uh, the signal here, you can send out DisplayPort, you can send out HDMI, you can connect USB uh, peripherals to this dock. But that's all because of DisplayPort over USB-C, which is what comes out of the phone to the dock. So there's a, there's a USB Type-C, there's a slim port, there's HDMI, MHL, DisplayPort. So what's the difference between all these? Well, a lot of them do the same sorts of things. Slim port is actually a, a, a component of DisplayPort. It is actually DisplayPort. Uh, it's just Analogic's brand name for the product. Uh, HDMI has been around for a long time. HDMI is you know, primarily on televisions but it's also in the PC monitor and uh, PC space as well. But the market right now is moving to using the Type-C connector for pretty much everything. Uh, you see that here with a lot of the phones now having Type-C. This Microsoft phone, HP has a phone. Uh, the new LG G5 yeah. phone that was introduced, if you've seen the, uh, the connection from the phone up to the VR360 headset, Nice. That video is carried by DisplayPort over USB-C from the phone up to the uh, VR. So why is DisplayPort the choice for USB Type-C? Well, it's, uh, it's the first one implemented over Type-C. We worked very closely with the USB-IF in, in uh, developing our spec. It's all the products you see that we have here today from Apple, Lenovo, Asus, yeah. LG, yeah. Dell. Uh, Etc. all use uh, DisplayPort over USB-C. It's the only current system in the marketplace that uh, offers video over Type-C. There are no others. But in the future there could be what? What would be the others? Would be yeah, HDMI? Would be MHL? Potentially there could be MHL or HDMI alt modes, but at this point they, they're not, uh, they don't have any products in the marketplace. These products have been in the marketplace, more coming all the time. Uh, you, everything we have here, you Go could, you could, uh, you could yeah. buy today. These, the Lenovo Yoga 900 uses DisplayPort over USB-C. That product you can buy today. Um, and on the other side here is a different demo. Uh, another Yoga here. Uh, Dell uh, XPS 15. This actually uses Thunderbolt. And so the new Thunderbolt 3 Which uses, goes through a USB Type-C yeah, connector. Yeah, they use the new Type-C connector, but the video... Nice. The video portion is DisplayPort. Always has been. Anything Thunderbolt video is DisplayPort. And then it go, what is this? Uh, it's just going out to a dock, and then we're splitting the video signal to drive two separate displays. Nice. There's two dis separate displays going right here. Right. And which each of them can be a huge resolution. Uh, well, it depends on how you want to do it from Type-C. With uh, Thunderbolt, you can drive, I believe, up to two 4K displays. Uh, with the normal USB-C scenario we have here, this is a multi-display. This is three displays. So here's your Type-C connector right here. Display port over USB-C to the dock. The dock has two. One monitor is connected directly into the dock. The other one is a daisy chain. So Whoa. one monitor has got a DP in, DP out, DP in, DP out, so they're daisy chained together. So you can drive three displays, independent video streams, even though we're not showing independent ones here. These could be three different things, all from a single connector. That's so awesome. That, so that's you've been able to do with sort of standard display port for a long time, but we've implemented that same functionality over the single connector USB-C. 
So you get that same functionality with simply one connector. And that carries both your video, your USB, and power. This is a fantastic time right now, 2016. Uh, Dell, Lenovo, very excited about this, right? Uh, Microsoft, uh, like I said, LG product, the new G5 uses uh, the display port over USB-C, the new Huawei, I think it's called MateBook. If you look at there, they have a sort of ultra slim uh, new notebook and that has an external docking station and the connection to that dock is also display port over USB-C. So nice. And is it easy to, to convert the display port to HDMI? Absolutely. So, so how does that work? So inside of these docks, there's a silicon that does the conversion from display port to uh, HDMI. Uh, this one uh, is all display port, but it doesn't make any difference. You'll see docks that will have even VGA ports. VGA, HDMI, DisplayPort, that's one key feature of DisplayPort is it easily adapts to other interfaces. And nice. the other ones don't necessarily offer that. So you'll see some docks where this will be DisplayPort over USB-C to the dock, but the dock may only output HDMI and VGA. Yeah, but still DisplayPort is part of it. But still, in order to do that, you need this. So Nice. Is there a license? So how does it work? We're a uh, membership-driven standards organization, so uh, there's no royalties on DisplayPort. Uh, people become members of our organization so they can participate in the development of the specs, and then they go out and build their own products based on that. Nice, so there's gonna be a, a huge increase of DisplayPort stuff this year, right? Uh, all of these, currently everything we're seeing that's using the new Type-C connector, uh, that's adding the uh, video functionality that's all DisplayPort. When you make a smartphone with USB Type-C, if you want to have DisplayPort, what do you need to add to the smartphone? Uh, the smartphones have chips in them that enable that. A company that does that currently is Analogix. They're a member company. They have a booth here as well. It's and a they, tiny small chip near the port? Right. They have integrated. They Well, they have multi-solutions. I think one is a two-chip solution, and I think their newest one is a single chip. But they could tell you more about that. But that has to be integrated on the phone side. And there's a bunch of other companies working in towards nah, that? There are other companies that are doing chips for these docks to do the uh, translation uh, from, say, DisplayPort to HDMI or VGA. There's silicon in there that does that. And there's a variety of companies that are doing that sort of thing, too. How much does it cost, those chips? Uh, that I don't know. I'm but it should be very business. affordable. Like, well, shouldn't it be gonna, like if you're going to put them in a phone, they have to be affordable. <laughs> like any, any phone with USB Type-C should be like... Uh, able to just have that function. Right. Because it'd be sad to have USB Type-C and not have the function, right? Uh, un unfortunately, there are phones in the market that just use the Type-C for, uh, port for uh, charging only. That's too bad, right? Well, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Google did that. They came out with the Chromebook Pixel, which uses Type-C with DisplayPort. Then they came out with... Uh, Nexus 6P. 6P, which just used the C for charging. That's terrible. Why would they do that? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also the Nexus 7 uh, fi uh, 5X is also USB Type-C and is, doesn't do display, and There's right? also some phones, I think the OnePlus and some others, some of the Chinese phones just use charging. I think initially they wanted to get that feature and they, they, you know, they weren't that well versed in how to implement sort of the full feature set with USB plus the... So Microsoft was the first to put uh, DisplayPort over USB-C in a phone. HP introduced uh, a Windows 10 phone here that does the same thing as the Microsoft using Continuum. So they now have a phone. Uh, and I said the LG G5, although they're only showing it driving video to the VR headset, uh, potential, I, we haven't tested it, but I would assume you could drive a monitor with it. Uh, same sort of scenario, at least run video from your phone to a display. Um, using a dock or what have you. Too. I hope all these guys come out with amazingly awesome laptops that don't have a CPU, but that just do DisplayPort and you power it with your phone and well, you yeah, the Microsoft, connect uh, Continuum style. The Continuum style is, is has a lot of uh, really cool factors. We've used it in our office for meetings and what have you. And I mean, it does the job. I think the limiting thing with the uh, with the Windows 10 phones are they're, they're not that popular. I mean, they're not Android, right? So once, uh, once you see this functionality coming out of an Android phone, like the LG or others that may follow, uh, then it's possible to have that same sort of scenario, but on, a, on an operating system that's you know, uh, far more used in the marketplace. 
So basically, Google really needs to kind of like wake up, no? And uh, I'm just joking, but I, I would really like to see more Google involvement in this kind of area. They need to do this continuum idea, and they need to work well, with you. you could do that they need with to Google. have display port on could, all their phones. You could sort of have continuum with Google Docs, I suppose. You could run all the Google applications over the internet on your phone, drive them to an external display, plug in a keyboard and a mouse, and use your phone as the compute engine. Yeah. I mean, the phones now have more than enough power to do what most people want to do because, let's face it, most people are doing what they want to do with a phone. <laughs> yeah, but the, this, so. there's no Android official UI for no. all this productivity kind of stuff. And no, not yet. like uh, Microsoft is, is awesome in getting into this. Uh, so I think that's fantastic that they're doing it yep. and they're working with you. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's some very cool technology and uh, phones are becoming ever more powerful and... Uh, you know, a lot of people, that's their only computing device now. Uh, we've seen sales of notebooks and other things starting to, to uh, slow down. And I mean, I, I know people uh, that are in their 60s who their only computing device is like an iPhone 6S. They buy whatever phone they can get with a big display, and that's what they use for their internet for everything. They don't have any computers. So. And Apple is totally on. Uh, they have the USB Type C MacBook already, so maybe well, they can, the they'll future, come with more. There may be more, or they, I would assume, will at least go to Thunderbolt over Type C um, in the future, if if not just uh, the standard Type C stuff. So.